All right, so we're now in Phoenix. And in Phoenix, it's a, a flat membrane, flat roof, black EPDM membrane, no ventilation at all, completely, completely filled with insulation. And I get a call saying, Joe, Joe, got to help us. We've got lots of drywall cracks. And I said, well, where are you? Well, we're in, we're in Phoenix. When did the cracking start happening? Well, it's been happening for a year. Well, what are you doing differently? We're not doing anything differently. We're just doing the same damn thing. We don't understand. So there's something different. So here we are. And I said, well, what's the pattern of drywall cracking? I already knew what was going on. I mean, I was just, well, what do you mean? Well, is it happening on the interior partitions or on the exterior wall? Son of a bitch. It's not happening at the outside where the drywall meets the ceilings at the outside. It's only on interior partition walls. I says, how'd you know? Yeah, I'm a legend. He says, what's, what's going on? Well, I'm not telling you. What do you mean? I need to see just in case I'm wrong. So off I fly to, fly to Phoenix, and uh, we're on this a bit of a hill, and I'm saying, okay, show me the houses, where are the houses that have the problem, and where are the houses that don't have the problem? And he points, these over here don't have the problem, and these over here do have the problem. And I said, you told me you built them exactly the same way. He says, well, we did. And then I said, look more carefully. And he burst out laughing. What happened was is that they changed the flat roof membrane from a black membrane to a white membrane. What was happening when the membrane was black was the moisture, even in Phoenix, in the wintertime, it's not a big winter, but it does get cold, the moisture goes up and it accumulates in the plywood and the upper cords of the flat wood trusses. And it gets driven down because of the sun because the membrane is really freaking hot. So the moisture goes up, gets driven down. When they changed the color of the membrane to a white membrane, the moisture went up but didn't go down. So what happened to the moisture content of the top cord of the parallel wood cord truss? It increased relative to the moisture content of the bottom cord. So if the top cord is at a higher moisture content than the bottom cord, the top cord expands. So the truss bows upward. It's called truss uplift. And the interior partition walls don't move. So you get drywall cracking because the truss goes up. We learned about this way back when in the 80s in Canada when we retrofitted roofs with blown insulation, and all of a sudden, we had drywall cracking. When the roofs were poorly insulated, the top cord and the bottom cord were relatively warm. They were roughly at the same temperature. When we insulated up the yin yang with zoo, the top cord became very, very cold. We also ventilated the roof to not have moisture problems, so it got really, really cold. And so the trusses would bow upwards. And we learned that we could not attach drywall closer than 12 inches to 18 inches for an interior partition wall. So in other words, we'd put the ceiling drywall up, but the edges of the drywall would not be attached. We would attach them with a drywall clip. So when the truss bowed up, the drywall bent. Truss uplift is not truss uplift if you can't see it. It's called floating corners. So the biggest innovation that people have forgotten is that as we started heavily insulating our roofs and walls with wood assemblies, we needed to attach the drywall less. That's also why we want floating corners in, 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 in exterior walls. We want floating corners everywhere with drywall. What? 
Yeah, wood moves. And it really moves differentially. Guess what? When you add insulation and a lot of it.